Hey, Kaylee, want to hear a joke? Sure. This year's Super Bowl. Wow. Too soon? Nah. Stay tuned for more MSU Tonight. Welcome to MSU Tonight. I'm Kaylee Anderson. And I'm Sam Woolley. And we have a great show for you tonight. That's right. Sam is going to have a chat with a couple members of the Murray State Greek community. Plus, we'll have a review of this year's big game. But before all that, let's take a look at some hot topics. Alpha Gamma Delta Sorority had their philanthropy event today on campus. Their events were Gossip Squirrel, where you could send a valentine to a member of a fraternity or sorority for $3, and $1 kisses from their adorable dog named Poppy. AGD's philanthropy head Kelsey Hatley informed me that all of their proceeds go to local Callaway County Feed the Hungry projects, such as Meals on Wheels and Soup for the Soul. Murray music lovers turned out to see some great bands perform in a local basement this past Friday. Virginia's Gaffer Project headlined with support from Murray-based sister bands Secular Pets and AD Survival. Friday's show was the first date on Gaffer Project's 19-stop tour, which will take them to Kansas, Colorado, and Oregon. This show was one of many organized by musician and Murray resident Tim Payton. If you're in a basement and you're playing music uh, within like a community, especially like a small community like Mary, I mean, you're only there for the right reason. Nobody's in this for money. Like it's only just celebrating creativity and it's really cool, especially to have like a touring band. Murray State University Cinema International will be playing In the Fade on February 7th and 9th in the Kerr Center Theater. Starring Diane Kruger, the German film tells the story of a mother's resilience in the face of tragedy, highlighting important themes including drug addiction, shortcomings in the legal system, and mental health. Screenings will begin at 7.30 p.m. and admission is free. Don't go away, there's more to come on MSU Tonight. Greek life and a look at the not-so-Super Bowl. It's all coming up. Stay tuned. Welcome back to MSU Tonight. You might have noticed that last week was Rush Week on Murray State's campus, and I'm joined in the studio by Jordan Colbreth and Emma Pate, who are here to discuss what that's all about and some other things that are coming up in Greek life communities. And welcome you two. So I got a quick question for both of y'all just to kind of introduce uh, your fraternities. And um, so Jordan, you are from? Uh, I'm from Sigma Phi Epsilon. And Emma. And I'm from Delta Zeta. Delta Zeta. These are both uh, professional Greek organizations, correct? There's a social. 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 <laughs> cool. So um, what made you guys want to rush when you guys were, uh, also tell what grade you guys were in when you decided to do this. Do you want me to go first? Okay. I was a freshman and I decided to go through recruitment because I'm from out of state and no one from my hometown really came here. And I wanted to find that home away from home. And during recruitment, I, it was very stressful, but I found that in Delta Zeta. So That's really cool. Um, I rushed whenever I was a first semester freshman, and my older brother was actually a SIGEP. Oh, and really? he um, discussed all the things that they were about and our cardinal principles, and it really got me wanting to join a fraternity as good as that. That's awesome. I'm glad that you guys found that kind of family, that closeness that um, usually Greek life can only provide because. Uh, that's what's so interesting about these organizations. It's like um, most people are from v way out of state, like you said, yeah. and um, you get this massive group of people to come together and you all are like a literal big family. Mm -hmm. So did you guys have a really good turnout for the past few rush weeks, like the one in the fall and in the spring? Um, I would say overall numbers are down in recruitment just across the United States, but I feel like Murray State had a pretty good turnout. Um, just dealing with, you know, enrollment dropping. I feel like we still had a pretty good turnout. I know we got a good class of girls and I know all the fraternities had pretty successful stuff, wouldn't you say? Yeah, the fall rush is usually the biggest mm -hmm. throughout the school, where that's where we get most of our guys usually. But then this spring semester rush week wasn't that bad for us altogether. We got more than most of the fraternities overall. That's really cool. Um, 
Find Me Alpha, they're interesting. That's the one that I am pledging right now. They only rush once a year, so their pledge class has to cover, the numbers have to cover an entire year instead of the semester thing. But that's where you guys kind of have an advantage because you get the more numbers and interesting things like that. So you guys um, went through the process, you've been in there. How long have uh, both of you been in each of your organizations? Um, this will be my third year altogether in the in SIGIP. Going on my second semester of my second year. Yeah. That's cool. Do you guys hold any uh, positions in your uh, groups? I do not currently. Oh, cool. I'm cool. the vice president of membership, so I'm in charge of recruitment, actually. Oh, that is really cool. <laughs> yeah, so it was exciting this week. <laughs> so do you guys say that you are um, better individuals having gone through the process and the initiation and all the stress that comes with that, but coming out fine? Oh yeah, definitely. Throughout my time in SIGEP, it's definitely improved my well-being overall, and it's given me many skills that will help me throughout my personal life and my career and in the future. Yeah, I, I agree because, you know, I used to be so shy and antisocial and, you know, an introvert, and I would have never imagined that I would be running a recruitment for a sorority. I just never would have thought I'd be able to do that, and it's pushed me academically and socially, just all around made me a well-rounded person. That's really interesting. So um, would you guys say that it kind of helps with um, being able to develop like more finite social skills? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Overall, makes me more of a balanced man, I'd say. More of a balanced man, that's really cool. <laughs> I would say that it helps you learn how to work in teams and how to delegate and how to lead and how to work in teams because, you know, I'm dealing with 60 plus girls and any group of girls is going to be hard to work with and you know if you're in a leadership position or just in a sorority period you got to figure out how to work with that many girls and how to you know delegate and how to make sure what needs to happen happens and I feel like that translates perfectly into like the real world and the workforce. That's yeah that's what I was about to say that's really interesting because like working in groups is so important mm -hmm. and usually you don't um, get that with most like just standard organizations like some clubs and stuff like that like there's not a whole lot of like group work but you guys are like essentially forced to come together and work mm -hmm. for a common good like all the time yeah. and i think that's really cool that you guys um are kind of put in that environment so you said that um this helps you in your professional life like can you explain that a little bit like what's the benefits of that um for SIGEP we have a higher gpa that we like to encourage throughout our fraternity so everyone's definitely encouraged to improve themselves academically. And then throughout SIGEP, there's different processes that include different, like interviews, for example, to help uh, improve your like skills when it comes to maybe trying to join a job or just searching for something that will increase your overall living wages in the future. <laughs> That's super cool. Yeah, um, I know we have study groups and we've started this thing where there's a proctor and we all have academic study groups and it's just quiet hours and so we're all trying to push each other to succeed academically because that's the main reason that we're here and so if we're not succeeding in that area then we won't succeed in our sorority life either so um, I know I pair up with girls that are in my uh, major and they help me out I help them out um, and we just study for tests together you know if there's a sister in a class we try to you know get study guides going and kind of help each other out that's really cool that you guys are so responsible on top of your academics, um, not necessarily like below your organization, but like it kind of works in tandem. It's not like one's, well, obviously like academics are the most important, mm -hmm. but like you guys kind of treat it as these both can coincide and better each other. And I think that's super cool that both of your organizations can uh, be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So do you guys have any um, interesting stories that you could tell me about uh, your process, like times that things maybe got stressful but you were able to get through it really well? Um, I will say formal recruitment at any, on any campus for sororities is one of the most stressful times, but just seeing those girls run home on bid day, I mean, it's just like new additions to the family. And, you know, recruitment, it just reminds everyone why we joined this and we have philanthropy day and everyone goes over what they're actually here for and raising money for and it just kind of brings everyone closer together it's long nights and it's very stressful but once we you know are brought back down and this is why we're here and then we see these new girls come home it's just kind of like icing on the cake and it just kind of ties it all together <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, as a freshman coming in, you don't have very many friends, like naturally. So rushing and joining a fraternity, like going through the whole rush week, definitely uh, introduces you to many different people and definitely like provides me with a lot of friends that I will have th in the future. And there's nothing really compared to whenever on bid day you're rushing down the steps of love it into your brother's loving arms and you do a big cheer. It's just, it definitely fills you with as much joy as that you could ever imagine. That's awesome. I heard you talk about uh, your philanthropy event. Mm -hmm. Have you guys started that yet? Have you already done it or is it planned for the future? Um, so we have, most organizations on campus have a philanthropy event in the fall and the spring, mm -hmm. mainly just one big one and kind of a small one. Like uh, GAM had their big one in the fall, now they're doing the like Gossip Squirrel. And so we mm -hmm. had our small one in the fall and then we have our big one, Hoops for Hearing, this spring and it'll be later on in April and we'll have more details once they come together. But oh, yeah, cool. it's just like a 3v3 tournament for all the organizations on campus. and. We raise money for speech and hearing. Oh, that's super cool. Yeah, yeah and our philanthropy is Best Buddies. And last semester we had our annual zombie run, which is our normal philanthropy event. And then this semester is our smaller one where we'll probably do a, a whole sorority wide um, competition to where they compete in like flag football. That's super cool. I have an event that not a whole lot of people have been talking about yet, but here very shortly it'll become really big news. Uh, All Campus Sing. Um. Are you guys preparing <laughs> for that yet? All Campus oh, yeah, Scream? <laughs> yeah, we've already come up with, you know, everybody's already come up with themes and we're about to start practices and definitely gets everybody excited in our oh, yeah. chapter. I, I have practice today actually for yeah. it. Really? Because so, oh, people are cool. already getting down it's to business. Serious. Really cool <laughs> like this starts, is it uh, early May, late April is usually when it is? Or is April. it like April? Yes. Yeah. Because like people are already starting and oh, it it's is a big just deal. A, it is a huge deal. Because yeah, the whole campus comes down mm -hmm. to see it. Mm -hmm. And not just the campus, but it's the alumni too. Yeah. And like oh, the yeah. alumni of your fraternity and sorority is coming down to cheer you on. I can't, uh, do you guys remember what your things were last year? Because I do not. Our theme was we had songs that turned 10 years old. So oh, on cool. the back of our shirt it says you're so 2000 and late because it was. 2018. That's <laughs> so cool. it was pretty fun. Last year I was not able to do it, unfortunately. Oh, no. I did do Step, however. But I did Step <laughs> last year, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I do not remember our theme for ACS. Yeah, I can't tell you. <laughs> that is something else I also wanted to bring up. Are, are any of you guys involved in, you said you were involved in Stomp, or, or Step, my bad. Are you, <laughs> step? are you involved in Step? I did Step last year. Um, this year I'm doing ACS. Just, just oh, switch cool. it up. I really want to end up doing all campus thing because I saw it last year and it was just an absolute blast. It and looks that, like so much fun. Yeah, now that I'm a pledge, the, I'll be able to finally do that with Find Me Alpha and also with Step. I feel like I might get in on that. I don't know. It looks Step is it, a good time. It looks intense. Probably the I, most fun time of my college career. Yeah, it is yeah. ridiculous. Well, that is all we have time for. Thank you guys so much for coming in and doing this interview with me. And there will be more to see on MSU tonight. I will see you later. And Keenan Hall and Blake Saladin will be talking about Sunday night's Super Bowl. So we'll be right back after this. Welcome back to MSU tonight. I'm Blake Sandlin. And I'm Keenan Hall. And welcome to All In, a sports debate show with a twist. You've watched sports talk shows before, but on MSU tonight, we're going to put our money where our mouths are. Every week, we'll debate topics in sports on campus and nationally. We will then produce our best sports takes and wager these poker chips on them based on how confident we are that these predicted events might happen. At the end of the semester, whoever runs out of chips or has the lowest chip count will be forced to sit blindfolded while the winner pours anything of their choosing on them. Keenan, you ready to go? I'm ready. Let's get it. Let's get it. So, as Kaylee so lovingly put it, um, this was the not-so-Super Bowl. Um, Let's go ahead and get your first thoughts on that. It was a 13 to three game, the lowest scoring in NFL history. Um, for some people, maybe more defensive lovers, this was the game that they were may maybe relishing. Right, uh, to me, I actually enjoyed the game, uh, as boring as it was. I'm a defensive first kind of guy, so uh, seeing the defenses actually step up in a Super Bowl game and the biggest game of the year was uh, it's pretty interesting to see to me. Uh, 
you, kudos to the defense. You know, you applaud that effort. Uh, they're really selling out. Uh, I think Brady threw a pick when it's what first play, first yeah. pass mm-hmm. of the game. So uh, I mean, you just you love to see that kind of effort in a championship game. So for it was, sure, it was great to see. To put it into perspective, fifty-five point five was the over/under for that game, and I guess it hit what sixteen. Yeah, it wasn't so. nowhere close. I mean, uh, give it the offenses for both teams had three first downs for the entire game. Sure. So, I mean, that, that's put it in perspective. So. Sure. Uh, one stat I thought was interesting, and I think was the comparison between the quarterbacks. Tom Brady, 262 yards. Jared Goff, which is 229. But pretty similar stat lines. But I thought the Patriots almost controlled the game the whole way. Did you feel the same way? Of course. I mean, the Patriots dominated time of possession throughout the game. Uh, I think the first half, uh, the Rams probably had about three to five minutes of possession and probably ran less than 10 plays the whole half. So, I mean, uh, you applaud that effort for the defense. Bill Belichick had a great game plan for that one. So, For sure. And from Super Bowl, let's move on to uh, maybe some local on-campus events. Let's go to Rifle. Um, big weekend for, the, for them, not the only team celebrating on Super Bowl Sunday as the Rifle team won their fourth consecutive championship. Uh, Keenan, I know you've covered the team extensively all year long. Um, what was your um, analysis from that event? I mean, it's, it's a testament to how Alan Lauer has transformed that program. Well, I mean – Granted, the, uh, our OVC rifle team is one of the best in the country, ranked number five in the nation right now. Uh, but, I mean, uh, in that OVC championship, they were, they were heavily contested. Uh, oh, uh, Moorhead State had a great shot to uh, win it there at the end. Coach Lawler mentioned earlier, I spoke to him today. Uh, but uh, he just uh, he was confident in his team's ability, and uh, they really uh, separated uh, the score late in the match. So it was pretty well. I mean, four straight OVC titles yeah. for the – uh, Murray State rifle team, uh, fifth one for Coach Lawler under his uh, leadership. So it's pretty, it's pretty good to see. Yeah, a great win for them, and they've only lost two games this year to UK and and uh, West Virginia. So really, another great year for this this team. They'll uh, play in two weeks, correct? Yes, uh, they have the NCAA qualifiers in two weeks. Uh, they have a home match against Nebraska University. I think they're ranked number 11 in the country at the moment. So uh, it'll be a pretty, uh, pretty good match. Uh, Right now they're preparing their uh, training, coming off that championship. It's just a regular week for them. Uh, they're used to winning here at Murray State Rifle, so they're just uh, going back, training, getting ready, getting rested, uh, icing up, you know, battling through the injuries. So they'll be pretty good. So they'll be ready to go. And from that, we'll move on to women's basketball. Uh, women's basketball, they're coming off a split week last week, uh, going one and one in the two games they had. Uh, Blake, you've been covering women's basketball pretty heavily this year. Uh, you want to go ahead and give me your thoughts on last week. How, how do you think the team did? Yeah, it was an instrumental week for them. I mean, struggling most of conference play, but coming into this week with Jacksonville State and Tennessee Tech, um, two great teams in the league, Tennessee Tech number one in the league. But Jacksonville State, we'll start with that. Um, that was a game I think it really instilled a lot of confidence and hope into this, te- this team's season because I think a lot of our confidence wavered a little bit. They have a losing record right now. Um, but that game, I think you saw what we've been looking for most of the year was that third scoring option. You know, we've seen Evelyn Adebayo, she's averaged 18 a game, and Macy Turley averaged 12 a game. Um, they've been the, the ever-present scores, mm-hmm. but we, we've yet to see that third score emerge. Mm-hmm. And we saw that uh, on Thursday with the um, – ascension of Janika Griffith Wallace. She had 25 points for the team and Brianna Crane also stepped up with 20. So that led the way and for Jackson to defeat Jacksonville State, a huge win for that program and it really translated to Saturday. I mean, she, uh, in that Jacksonville State game to mention, I mean, Janika, she looked just, she really looked comfortable she did. out there with the ball. I mean, not many of the guards could stay in front of her and she was getting to her spots pretty easily and she's moving the ball well as well. So. Uh, go ahead, as you were mentioning about the Tennessee Tech game as well last week. Yeah, the Tech game, I think no one really expected them to compete in that game, mm-hmm. and just based on the prior results. Um, but, but I think they really surprised people again in that one, in that they came out, they were leading most of the way. I think up until the third quarter, they were tied going into the fourth. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think what cost them, what's cost them a lot of times, has just been the turnovers, and in this game in particular, the points in the paint. They weren't able, or not the points in the paint, excuse me, the, uh, the points off the bench. Yeah. Um, That team, I think they had 45 points off the bench, two players combining for, I think, 32 points. Um, So you can't win that brand of basketball. Um, But, yeah, again, the turnovers costly in that one. But I think overall it was a promising weekend. I believe so as well. Uh, Much to look forward to for the women's basketball. Of course, they're still growing. They're a young team as well. But uh, we'll be looking forward to seeing what they do next. Yeah, and on the subject of turnovers, I I wanted to kind of get into our first bet here. 
Okay. Because uh, turnovers, they're averaging 17.7, I think, 17.4 um, on this season. So this weekend coming up, you got EIU, you got SIUE. Mm -hmm. Let's set the line at 17. Okay. Will this Murray State team commit more than 17 turnovers? What's your take on that one? Well, uh, given that they've been on the road for the past two games, uh, I think coming back home, they'll, they'll enjoy the home stay for a couple games. So uh, I'm going to go under 17. I'm going to put three chips in on that one. Three chips. Okay, well, feeling good about it then. That's four, but. Okay, four chips on that. Okay, so I'm thinking over on this game. Uh -huh. um, let me tell you why. EIU, they're averaging 19.8. Uh, turnovers to their opponents. That's how much they're turning, turning the ball over on the other side. Um, right. they, Murray State, in the first meeting with EIU, they turned it over 23 times. Um, I get that it's a home game, but, I mean, 19.8, it's hard to argue with that automatically. This team, Murray State, has struggled uh, protecting the ball, and this doesn't appear like it's trending in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Until I see otherwise, it's hard for me to say they're going to be able to, to temper those turnovers and take care of the ball. So I'll match it. All I'll right. match with uh, match with four. All right. I'll and uh, so we will see what happens on that. Um, so for our next prediction, let's yeah. talk just the results of the weekend. Um, mm -hmm. Like I said, EIU uh, Thursday at five o'clock, SIUE Saturday at five o'clock. Double headers in both of those games. <laughs> um, how do you feel like the team is going to fare this weekend? What's the record coming out of this weekend? Well, uh, you made a good point with the turnovers there. Yeah. Uh, Coming out of the weekend, coming out of this weekend, uh, I say the women's wrestling team go 0-2. Um, okay. They've been struggling uh, as of late to close out some games. Uh, they've been in most of the games that they've lost. They've they had a chance to win it at the end, but uh, just uh, late game execution hasn't been there. Uh, and it goes back to, of course, the maturity and the uh, just the lack of leadership on the team. So I say they go 0-2. Um, if we're betting on this, I'm just going to put one of my chips in. It's already put four in. Okay, so I like I don't that. Lose it on the first week. So that that's. What do you think? I don't disagree. It could easily happen. Mm -hmm. It's we've seen it all year long. Um, Eastern Illinois was a close game the first time they played. If it wasn't for the turnovers, I think that easily could have been a Murray State win. Um, so I'll match you with the one. Um, I think they are going to go one and one though. Take Eastern Illinois, SIUE in that game last year. Um, I thought SIUE controlled the whole game. Uh, they could shoot really well, and I thought the effort from Murray State in that game last year, or excuse me, a few weeks ago, wasn't there. So I think one on one, um, a respectable result given the opponents and the way they've, they've played for most of the year. From that, uh, let's move on to uh, men's basketball. Um, one and one last week. Uh, Jacksonville State on Thursday and uh, Tennessee Tech on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Keenan, um, you watched those games. Tell me what, you, what your first thoughts and takeaways from those games were. Well, the Jacksonville State game, uh, looks like they weren't ever in that one no. to start off. Uh, we got down pretty early, and <clears throat> we, never got our, we never got our traction in that game. Uh, going, uh, losing on 20 points on the road in a game that we, granted, we should have won, but uh, a lot of people didn't think we would win. Um, of course, John Morant played as about as well as he could, uh, given that he's always been the main focus on the defense against the defense from the other opposing team so uh my prediction for this week i believe i'll probably go two and oh i think this weekend two and oh this week yeah. interesting and the, the guys like we said uh eastern illinois waits them on thursday and siue on saturday mm -hmm. um in my opinion that jacksonville state game um i thought of course that was the battle for first place they were both tied mm -hmm. at that time uh, that was a pride game man and mm -hmm. it didn't play out like that yeah. i thought the team um, honestly lost interest and didn't really have the effort. That lead ballooned to 20 towards the end of the game. I think they had it at 11 with about eight minutes to go. Um, but I think you saw the fight JSU had. They didn't take anything for granted, and Murray State um, honestly did. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for fans that maybe thought, maybe Chalks Belmont, the Belmont loss is a fluke. Maybe Jaw mm -hmm. wasn't playing his best, so maybe we'll beat them another time. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what they considered that. But when you see them beat by 20, I think you start to understand the defic deficiencies that this team has. Yeah. And it maybe expose that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so as far as this weekend goes, you put two on, two on that? I put two. I said they're going 2-0, and oh, but uh, I'll put two chips on that. So okay. I, mean, that's, I think they're pretty confident. They're coming back, on, coming back home after two games on the road. It's been last week. Uh, I see the big stepping up this week, uh, having a great game. Uh, Darnell Coward and uh, K.J. Williams, uh, I think they'll step up this week. They had a, kind of a lackluster game at Jacksonville State, mm -hmm. and then uh, 
they were pretty they were struggling uh in that tech game late and uh so I, I think they'll go two and zero this week. Home, home, the two home games would be good for them. So, what do you think? No, I mean you mentioned those big guys, and, and you're absolutely right. Darnell Coart, two for nine in that JSU game. Mm -hmm. uh, KJ Williams, off and on, I, I think most of the year, and that's the thing with just getting them both um, to play together cohesively. And to, I mean, they're two different players. I think mm -hmm. uh, Darnell's primarily a back to basket type of guy, and KJ is more of that power bruiser inside. Mm -hmm. um, but. A prediction that, that I want to address. Will KJ Williams and Darnell Coart combine for 18 points in at least one game this weekend? In at least one game. I say yes, they do. Okay. Uh, you got Darnell uh, averaging about eight, eight point six points a game, and uh, KJ hovering around seven, almost eight points. Uh, I say they do, both of them combined, score at least over 18. Uh, you're going to probably see them get fed pretty early. Jaws probably going to get everybody going. Uh, until he settles the, settles the game down, you know, get him uh, get him amped up. So I feel like uh, they'll they'll probably get over that easily. Interesting. I'm gonna say no on that. I think they haven't really played well at the same time uh, for most of the season. I'm gonna put two chips on that. Two. And you're gonna match with two. I put one. You get two. I'm, I'm okay. I'm all in. Fine. All right, so that's that. We're going to close with one thing, our, our okay. wild card of the week. That's national news, uh, whatever's going on in the headlines. Mm -hmm. We're going to have one bet on that. And this week, it's uh, with the trade deadline approaching on Thursday. Will Anthony Davis go – will he be traded by the Pelicans before the trade deadline? No. Yes, uh, the Pelicans, uh, simply put, they're salty that uh, LeBron James basically took AD right from under them. You know, they drafted him with hopes of him – uh, developing and he's actually sur uh, surpassed what they thought he would be so uh, I don't see them trading him they'll probably just hold him off and just say forget everybody else interesting I'm put gonna him. put one chip me too on, uh, I'm gonna say yes uh, the Celtics I think uh, AD has indicated that he doesn't want to go to the Celtics long term and I think that's what the Pelicans were waiting for uh, mm -hmm. as far as holding it past the trade deadline for a trade mm -hmm. so I don't I think that they will jump on a trade the Lakers have obviously shown interest I don't know if it's going to happen uh, but I think some team will come with an offer, um, whoever that might be, before the deadline at 3 o'clock on Thursday. So All right. we shall see. Okay. There's more MSU tonight on the way. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to tune in to MSU tonight every Tuesday at 5 on MSU TV 11. Or visit us on our YouTube channel. And remember, if you live in the Western District and you forgot to take your trash out, well, probably not getting picked up. I'll see you from MSU tonight. <laughs>